hope so. Yes, I am okay. hear you and see everything. Okay, so I go on with my talk. So I'm gonna show you very quickly, which has been the work done in parafish control just in 15 minutes to give you some tips uh, and to understand better the next talks we are gonna have through all the day in the webinar. So this is gonna be the schedule of my talk. I'm gonna first talk about the project, which have been our targets, the approach and solutions, and then which has been our legacy and the impact on the aquaculture industry. So first I start with the parafish control project. Our project started five years ago in 2015 and with a total contribution of almost 8 million euros by the European Commission. The full name of parafish control is Advanced Tools and Research Strategies for Parasite Control in, Europe, in European Farm Fish. The global objective of the project is increasing the sustainability and competitiveness of European aquaculture through the improvement of the understanding on the fish parasite interactions and finding innovative solutions and tools for the prevention, control, and mitigation of the major parasitic diseases that affect the six main uh, farm species in Europe, which are rainbow trout, common carp, Atlantic salmon, tilhead sea bream, European sea bass, and tarpon. This is the consortium overview. We are 28 partners from 50 countries, uh, together um, academic and uh, research organization, and also companies, SME, and large enterprises. And we gather expertise, not only in parasitology, obviously, we also have expertise in epidemiology, immunology, molecular biology, genetics, genomics, food safety, pathology, and chemotherapy. And altogether, we have a good uh, capacity on research facility, also biological resources, resources, host parasite models, vaccinology, sequencing devices, and biotechnology. And this approach is impossible to do on a single separated way. So these are the logos of all these 28 partners from the industry and the research organizations. I do want to hear representatives of some of these um, partners today in the webinar. As all the European projects, the consortium is organized through different work packages. I'm not going to read through all of them just for you to know that there are nine work packages tackling the different aspects. So the, each aspect for all the parasites is treated in each of the different work packages. And these are the phases that are behind the work packages. These are our um, work package leaders, some of them are talking today, and you can chat with them also and ask questions. So let's move to see which have been our targets. In Jailhead Cibrim, we have concentrated our efforts on studying the microsporidian and theosporan nucleophila and emerging parasite, the Mixozoan and Tiromixum lay the gil fluke, the monogenian Spadicotilic Christophe. And for European sea bass, we have concentrated on the isopod Ceratotoa astroides and Amylodinium ocellatum. For uh, Tarbot, uh, we have been working on another mixosoan, Enteromyxum scoptalmin, at the ciliate Philasteridis dyson party. In Atlantic Salmon, of course, we've been working on sea lice and the ameba, Neoparmea perurans, and Saprolegnia parasitica, the omicet. In Rainbow Trout, working on another mixosoan, the, the one that produces PKD, Tetracapsuloides briosalmonae, and the ciliate Ichthyophilus multifilis. This one also affects carp and many other fish species. And in common carp, we've been working on the mixosoans, Stelloanellus kitaway, and Sphorospora molnari. And we are also been working on sonotic elements that affect these six species. Sonotic elements are those that can be transmitted to fish to humans to demonstrate if there was really a uh, risk or not of these diseases being transmitted through the consumption of raw or undercooked uh, fish fillets. And this is going to be also one of the talks today. 
So this slide was going to be very short because um, Andrea Fabris was supposed to be giving a talk to give you a lot of information on the economic impact of parasites in aquaculture in Europe. So I'm not going to be so quick then because he had not the opportunity to present his talk. So parasites produce just direct mortality, but they also produce morbidity. Uh, that this morbidity is in many occasions difficult to economically know exactly how to measure it because uh, it's um, difficult for the farmers to differentiate for the ones that are producing bacteria or other agents. It can produce a decrease in the feed conversion rate, in the growth, they can even produce parasitic castration. They increase the susceptibility of fish to other diseases like opportunistic bacteria or reduce the capacity of the fish to cope with uh, the typical handling issues that are in a farm like vaccination, transport, or size grading. They produce harvest downgrades and also loss of market value and reduce the durability of the fish feeder. They also suppose a lot of cost of the treatments and prevention strategies, more disposal, and all these different, um, different facets of the effect of these parasites um, has been estimated globally by some authors as up to almost $10 billion in the world per, uh, per year. And in the, in the European Union, uh, some of our colleagues, um, uh, Hamid Roches estimated that in the European Union plus Norway, the parasite impact, uh, both direct and indirect, can, can escalate up to more than 700 million euros. So with this scenario, the project, what, uh, what was the approach? To give solutions for all these uh, problems. And um, I'm gonna show you which have been our um, way to obtain this solution since we started. We are now at the end of the tunnel and we can show you some of these things. After 46 milestones, 57 deliverables, and employing more than 1,030 person months, um, we are ready to show our footprint on these issues. We have collected more than 47 knowledge outputs to the project. Obviously, you cannot read through them, and you will get some details of some of these knowledge outputs. The idea has been uh, these knowledge outputs generating a more positive public perception through different ways. Because uh, in general, the public perception against farm fish is because of uh, farmed fish impact on the environment. And we have been working, for example, on knowing which is the interaction between wild and farm fish in terms of parasite transfer. And also we have been working on alternative treatments that uh, maybe in the future will not impact that much on the environment. And this means that also animal welfare will be improved if we take care of the fish in, a, in another way. In terms of food security, this is also an issue on public perception of aquaculture. And in this way, uh, we have also increased a lot the value of the farm fish because we have demonstrated that uh, the risk of having zoonotic elements to the fish that are farmed in the European Union is negligible. We cannot say it's 0% and always and forever, but that is a negligible risk. And you will hear today more about this. In terms of um, preventive measures for diseases and adverse health issues, we have been working on different aspects. In vaccines and immunoprophylaxis, we have advanced quite a lot in some vaccine candidates, and even in some of them, we have a lab and um, field trials already going on. And later on, you will hear about some of them. And also been working on different diets and additives to uh, to be included uh, in the fish that could promote uh, the immunity of the fish or uh, make them to cope better with the diseases. Uh, we, are all, we have been working also on biosecurity plans and integrated pest management strategies, and also in generating better and more diagnostic tools that they are going to be gathered in some of them in a, in a Springer ebook that will be available hopefully by the end of this year. 
And this will gather many different tools that we have generated in terms of in situ hybridization, qPCR, monoclonal antibodies, kits, and folks. And also, we have been working on um, epidemiological models and tools to help the farmers to, to see what's going on in their farms. In terms of knowing the parasites and the host, first of all, we need to know what we are handling with. And in this sense, uh, we have been working on achieving the in vitro culture of some of the parasites, which is really very difficult in some cases, and uh, getting the experimental transmission, um, the challenge models working and being repeatable and, and being uh, okay. And this has been gathered, the ones that we have achieved during the project, together with other authors out of the consortium working on other parasites, this has been gathered on a, on a book that is going to be published by 5M. Right now we have uh, 25 uh, parasites on board in the, in the book and hopefully also will be edited, um, I think probably in the mid-year. And this is going to be on a standard operating protocol for isolating and transmitting parasites, fish parasites. We have been working also on the different the life cycles of some parasites. And um, in some of them, we have succeeded. In some others, we have not. But in general, we have uh, increased our knowledge on how the parasites are um, transmitted and how they go through the different organs of the animals. We have also invested a lot of effort and money in uh, sequencing genomes and transcriptomes of our parasites. And here you have some of the ones that he, we've been uh, succeeding. They are not yet published, but soon we will have uh, articles on, on them, on to Enteromixum, on the Philasteris dicentrarchi, on the Pyramiba perudans, Amylodinium, Spharicotyli, and Spherospora molnari. And this has opened a wide door for knowing more about the parasites, finding that's targets for vaccines, targets for um, treatments. We know more now about virulent factors, not only the genes, the proteins, escape pathways and antigens. And finally, in terms of knowing more the host, we know more about the pathology and the, fuse in, and the fish immune response against the parasites uh, at different levels, at the tissular, cellular, metabolites, molecule, genes, even the microbiota, how it's modulated by the parasite. And this will be explained later on. So if we talk about our figure, I think we have tried, we don't know if more or less in a good way or not, trying to fill the gap between science and industry to make our message to arrive to the industry so the industry know what are the new tools, the new products that can be used. And for doing so, uh, we have been doing uh, different training courses for the health manager, not only for students. Here you have some pictures of the different training courses that we had. The last one was in Zaragoza, and the last one was arranged in collaboration with other European projects, uh, Performfish and Medaid and the University of Zaragoza. And hopefully there are some of these students now uh, connected in the webinar. And we also had our industry corner. We have several industry forums uh, throughout different, um, different conferences that we have been participating. And we have also made this, this effort. So this our total figures right now. We have published a more than 57 peer review uh, review articles, most of them in open access, either Gordon or Green. We have participated in more than 200 conferences and workshops. Uh, four PhD theses have been already defended and more are on the go. We have a lot of people connected through Twitter and LinkedIn. We have produced or will produce at the end four videos, organized many training courses, workshops, integrated pest management strategies, guides, books, uh, two patents, industry forums, voluntary control system, etc. And I can say a uh, proud of uh, the consortium we are that we have contributed to the common fisheries policy and the blue growth 
and that we have put our little seat for the enhancement of the competitiveness of European aquaculture, which was the main objective of the project. And just to finish, I will give you our contacts. The, our communication and press, uh, Emma Bello from Aquatite, that she cannot be here today, though you see Emma Be Bello there, is Marike, as she said previously. She's got a health issue, but she has been all the time um, very much involved in the organization of this webinar and all the communication issues of the project. For the management, we have on, on board Enrique Belles from INRA Transfer Environment, which is the name now of INRA Transfer. And well, you already know me, coordination and our web page, you already know. And this is all, and thank you for your attention and we would like to have any question later on. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ariadna. We are going to try.